Hi there, welcome to our Marketing for Growth video training program. Um, this is sort of, I guess, the first chapter where we're going to work through some key concepts and uh, understand your target market. So, um, I guess the thing with marketing is half the money I've spent on advertising is wasted or marketing. The trouble is I just don't know which half. And, and it's really important that we get our head around this. So for me, marketing is a highly strategic activity that we need to think on in business. It's not just about how many Facebook posts you put out, um, all that sort of stuff. It's actually about having a clear strategy so that your Facebook po posts give you some traction and give you some energy. All right, so the six-part video program we're going to have is you'll be sent a, a, new, a new part each week. Uh, we're going to talk through some key concepts and target markets today. Video two, we're going to talk to product pricing and play strategies. We're then going to talk about promotional strategy in terms of your traditional promotional methods. And then the last three um, episodes are going to be around digital marketing and how we get our digital marketing strategy right. So let's just launch into, into today's program. Um, you'll find that you'll have some worksheets and some exercises and there'll be additional resources um, to do. So make sure you download the worksheets, stop the video and do the exercises and then watch any additional resources that we'll provide that will be on the, on the page that you would have logged into. We're going to help you build a plan. So a key component of this is making sure that, that, you, that you get some of these strategies right and then you start to get some actions that you can start to work on. And so um, the plan is a key component of that. Now I'm going to assume in your plan that you've done things like your vision and your objectives and some of those sorts of stuff. Um, you know, you, you understand what your business statement is, who you deliver, you know, what you deliver, who to and, and how you do that. Um, that you understand what your products are and that sort of stuff, then you've got some key measures for your business that, uh, that, that you're working to. But the rest of it, we're going to work through together. So first thing is set some objectives, all right? So set yourself a clear marketing goal. Doing this, I really like to, to set a goal, and it's called this VQTQ format, which is, just stands for there's a verb, you talk about a quantity, you set a time frame, and then you talk about the quality. Now, now sometimes the quality or the quantity, uh, one or the other, may be optional, but not both. Okay. So the example down the bottom in there is we're going to acquire 100 new clients by the 31st of December 2018 at an average of $500 per month net profit. Okay. So the verb is acquire, the quantity is 100 new clients, the time frame is December 2018 and the quality measure is at $500 per month net profit okay so I want you to just stop the video now take a session a second and and work out what's a clear goal for you to write down for say the next 12 months all right so what's a clear marketing goal you may have other goals for your business but what's your clear marketing goal it could be to include your market uh, to increase your market share it could be to acquire some new clients, it could be to get a total you know, new sales, it could be to sell a total number of units of product or, or hours of service or something else, but set a clear goal. Press pause when you're ready, start it up again. Okay, so welcome back, and, and I hope you've set that clear marketing goal. Plug that into your plan in the appropriate spot. All right, so let's talk through a couple of key concepts for marketing. The first one is the difference between marketing and sales. So the first of these is that marketing is a process of generating leads for your business, whereas sales is the process of converting those leads into customers. And quite often we, I get people who, who don't understand that marketing is really a strategic process for generating leads, where sales is the process of sitting across the table or, or maybe electronically converting those leads into customers. This is absolutely critical, and, and trust is how you build, um, you, you build your marketing, right? So, so as people trust you more, they, they will refer you more, you will get more business, they will come on board with you into your business, and, and you'll bring them on as a customer or as a client. So this trust equation was developed by a gentleman called David Meister, um, and um, a gentleman called Green, his first name escapes me at the moment, and they said that trust is a function of these four factors credibility so how credible are you in the marketplace so that's your qualifications your track record your history all that sort of stuff gives you some credibility reliability do you do the things that you say you're going to do and do you do them well so that's around quality a whole lot of other things but it's also about do you get back to people and follow up with them when you said you were going to do you can you actually um, you know uh, deliver on your marketing promise 
The third one is intimacy, which is is that deep understanding of the customer and their needs. All right, so so understanding their needs is really important, and demonstrating that you understand their business from their perspective is really important. So if we think about this as an equation where we've got credibility, reliability, and intimacy on the top line, we would then have on the bottom line it's just one, and it's called self orientation. And self orientation is how oriented to, are you towards yourself or towards adding value to the customer. Yeah? Now, it doesn't mean that you, you can't make money by, by being focused on the customer, but in your um, conversations and your contact with clients and you focus on it, are you interested in doing the right thing by the client, delivering as much value to them as possible, or you're just interested in getting some money out of them? And we've all met salespeople. We've all been in sales situations where they were just out to sell us something, whether it was good for us, whether it was the right thing for us or not, they just wanted to sell us something. Those people have a very high self-orientation and a very low client orientation, if you like. So if we think about these four factors, credibility, reliability, and intimacy on the top line, if we scored 10 out of 10 on each of those, right, we were brilliant in terms of credibility, reliability, and intimacy. We added those scores together, we'd have a score of 30 on the top line. Now, if we divide that by the self-orientation. So if our self-orientation is really low, right, we're really focused on the customer, we would have 30 divided by 1, say, which would give us a score of 30, which is is quite high, right? But if the alternative was was there, we had a self-orientation towards ourself, a really high self-orientation, we were a 10 in that area, then our trust equation, even though we're perfect on the top, would only be 3, all right? So so the, the self orientation is absolutely critical, and so when we are doing our marketing, when we are thinking through things, we need to be making sure we do the credibility, reliability, intimacy thing really well, but we also need to show that we are adding value and we are in this for the long haul and to add value to our customers. Really important concept, um, both in marketing and in sales. All right, the next concept I want to talk about is the loyalty ladder. And this is, this is where we have um, this range from suspects down the bottom, and that's everybody out there in the marketplace, to prospects, who's somebody who's been influenced in advance and has some level of motivation. So, so we might have spoken to them, they know about our business, maybe they've given us a call, maybe they've come to our website or whatever. We then convert them from being a prospect to a customer. And a customer is somebody for me who's purchased at least once and have a proportion of their business with you and maybe a portion of their business with other businesses that do the same thing. All right? A client is somebody who's exclusively yours or has been loyal to you, is a multiple customer of yours who buys off you repeatedly. Yeah? Um, virtually exclusively yours. And advocates are, are clients who champion your needs by saying how good you are to others. All right? Now we move people up this loyalty ladder from suspects through to advocates. Um, initially by doing marketing and bringing them in the door the sales process converts them from prospects into customers and then it's service and a quality of our relationship that converts them from being customers to advocates so again absolutely critical concept to, to remember for marketing is that our aim is to take people from being suspects to advocates and marketing is the first part of this and that's helping us basically bring in suspects and prospects into the business and feeding them into our sales funnel so that we convert them into customers or a proportion of them into customers. Okay, so that's a really important concept. And, and I guess the key to it is to deal effectively with people at every level of the loyalty ladder. So we're helping our customers climb to the top of the ladder, all right? So, so it's about dealing with, with them appropriately at different levels and marketing is a key driver of that to, certainly in the early stages. This, um, this sales equation is another concept I want you to get your head around. And, and I think it, it, it's a really important one that lots of people overlook. So basically sales is a function of the number of customers you have by the average sale per um, transaction and by the number of transactions per customer, say in a year. So, so in the example at the bottom there, if we had 100 customers and every time they came into our, our business, they spent $100 with, so $100 per transaction, and they did 10 transactions per annum, we would have a business of $100,000, which is 100 by 100 by 10. Okay? So, so that's fairly simple. If we want to actually increase each of those by 10, we not only got our business doesn't go up by 10%, our sales go up by 33%. The 133. So really important that small changes here can have big influences on our sales. But the way I like to think about this is 
when we're looking at our marketing, what do we need to do? So if we've got 15,000 customers, then getting more, and we can't service more of those customers, then, then getting more customers is not our problem. Maybe it's lifting the average sale or getting them to come back to and buy from us more and more frequently. So often I, I talk to people who have marketing problems. Their problem is not that they don't have enough customers. It's, not, it's just that they're not engaging with those customers well enough. So, so just use this as an equation to have a good hard look at your business to see where you need to put your effort into your business. All right, so let's talk about marketing now. So basically four or five P's of marketing. All right, the first P that's a hidden sort of P is what I call, is what I call the patrons, and it's your target market. And you can't get your marketing right without a target market. But once we've got some clarity around our target market, we can then say, what products and services do they demand from us? And when we've worked out the products and services they demand from us, then we can do some stuff around pricing. So therefore, how do we price that product and service to give us maximum penetration in that market? Then the play strategy is how we actually deliver our products and services to those people. How do we make that happen? And then lastly, how do we promote ourselves? Okay. Now the first three, product, price and place, could be iterative. We may need to, to look at a product, work at how we price it and how we deliver it and then go back and say, oh, that's not going to work. We can't actually deliver that product through that channel. Or if we do, the price point could be wrong. So it could be iterative. We might need to go around a few circles before we get it right. Okay. So we work to that. Product, price, place, then promotion. Absolutely critical. But the first of them is to determine who's our target market. So who is your target market? What are you aiming for? And the simple way to this is, is what we call with an avatar. All right. And we've given you a template for this. And it's, and it's easy to fill out. So first thing is think about your A-class customer. All right, so who is an A-class customer or you'd love to have as an A-class customer and use them as the model for building your avatar. Not your C or D-class customers, you want to model on your A-class customers. So the first thing we need is we want to talk about their demographics. How old are they? Where do they live geographically? Um, you know, a whole heap of those statistical things that we might be able to find out about our client. Okay. The second thing is the identity. What's the personal traits of this particular avatar that we really want them to have. And it could be, they could be family members, they could be innovative, they could be growing and dynamic, wanting to learn, all those sorts of identity characteristics which will help us to connect with them so much better. Okay, now once we've got the demographics and the identity clear, we can start to think about them. And we start to think about our clients and say, what are their key frustrations around the area of our expertise? But, but what are the key frustrations that drive them and you want three or four key frustrations and then you want to say and what's their one big fear you know and their one big fear could be they're you know afraid that they they won't be able to hand their business on to the next generation it could be um, another fear could be that if they get this all wrong their, their business will go you know broke or I don't know what it means you know if they don't have the right product then they won't be able to deliver a quality service that matches their marketing all that sort of stuff so think about what their key fears are. You know, one or two fears are the most. Similarly, then we understand what are their what are their wants? What do they really want from life? What do they really want out of their business? And therefore, and again, come up with three or four wants, and then come, then come back and say, then what are their aspirations? What do they aspire to? Yeah. Now, once we've got this information, then we can really start to target our marketing. We can really start to get um, a clear handle on how. We want to work with these clients. How you how you contact them, where we find them, and and what makes them tick. And we can start to pull on their frustrations and fears. So I actually pull out this this avatar for every piece of marketing that I do, and I will write down not necessarily the demographics and identity, but around a particular issue. If I'm trying to market market to, to um, people on a particular issue, I'll write in what are their key frustrations, what are their key fears. What are their key wants and what are their key aspirations in regard to this issue? And then I'll write a piece around that. Okay. So, so use this in a couple of different ways. You can use it as an overarching plan for, you, for your marketing, but you can also then use it to, to build an avatar, uh, build something targeted for that particular avatar. All right. So press pause and then complete the template for a typical avatar. And you may have two or three avatars in your business. You don't want to have any more than that. It's just way too hard. If you've got seven avatars 
then you've got got about four or five too too many. Okay, so think about it. What? Just stop. Press pause. When you finish the template, press start, and we'll go again. Okay, welcome back. So I hope you got your avatar really clear because it's absolutely critical, and and it's something that I'd encourage you to keep going back and updating and looking at on a regular basis. All right. The second component I want you to talk about today is competitive advantage. So what what does your business do that really sets it apart from the competition? Okay. And what we're looking for here is what do we do that adds maximum value to the customer, and then that we do better than the competition. Okay. So if you think about it, there are things that you do that add value to you as a business owner, but won't necessarily add value to your customer. But there'll be lots of other things that you do in your particular business that that add real value to the customer. But, we, but if we're going to be competitive, if there's going to be a competitive advantage, it's got stuff that we do that adds value that that we do better than other people. You know, it's no point us doing something that adds value and our competitors do it way, way better than us. That's not a competitive advantage for us. That's a competitive advantage for them. So what we were looking for, if you if you could if you plot each of these, if you looked at each each you know component of what might go into your competitive advantage and you scored it based on what you know, score it from say zero to ten in terms of adding value to the customer and in terms of beat the competitors, you could plot it on this graph and we'd end up with a you know a distribution where you'd have some of your your um, some of your um, stuff would be up here in this area up here, this is high value add area, but a small proportion of them will be both in this stuff that, that you do much better than the competition. Now from that you can start to drill down and say which one of those is more motivating? Which one of those is more palatable? And I do that by putting it into a we will win by. So it might be we will win by um, uh, having the best quality products, yeah, because that's what we do better in the comp competition. We might win by having the best service, or we could win by having the best support programs. I'm not sure what they are, but but really think it through and make sure it's a clear competitive advantage for you in your business. Now again, I want you to press pause and and work through that exercise. So work through what is your competitive advantage. You know, back to this question here. What is it? So I want you to come up to me with that we will win by state, statement. We will win by doing X, Y, Z. Okay, so, so when you finish that, press pause. When you finish the exercise, press play and we'll wrap up for the day. Okay, so... You'll see there's space for your target customers or your avatars up in the top right hand corner. So I want you to go in and fill in your plan and put in a rough summary of your target customer up here. And then and then over here is your competitive advantage. I want you to put your we will win by statement here. So today we've covered off on that on that target market. We did some key concepts of marketing first, but then we talked about it's our target market. And you want to get some real clarity around your target market and then you want to back that up with what's our competitive advantage. Okay. So that's um, that's all we're going to cover off for today. The next steps are, you know, go back and do those exercises if you haven't already done them. You can watch, play the video again, and pause at appropriate places. Work through those exercises. Get some clarity to what it is that you need to be doing in this space. Okay. Now, if you really want some help, um, then we're happy to help you. And and we work to a you know a, a, what we call a business growth model here, where we believe there are a couple of important things. If you're going to have a high performance business. A, it's got to be built on some strategic found foundation. So things like getting your vision right, your core values, your targets, your competitive advantage we've just talked about, purpose, objectives, all those sort of things that we've touched on, some of those things we've touched on today, you need to have them clear. But then we need to make sure that we go to the left-hand side. We've got a clear strategy. We understand who the shareholders are in our business and we work with them to make sure that they're delivering the best value for us. And then lastly, we get our people really working for us. That's make sure we're doing the right things in our business. But if you look at the right-hand side, we've also got to focus on sales and promotional, sales and marketing. We've got to think about operations. And then we think we've got about finance and admin systems to make sure we're doing things right. So that's about having our structures right and our processes right in these places. And that's the model that we work with when we work with, with businesses. All right. So for people often ask me, how does coaching work? Well, the coaching works with me. There are, we don't have one-off sessions where you ring up and say, hey, I've got this particular problem. Can you solve it? And we fix it for you, help you with it, and then you go off. Um, 
We don't do one-off sessions. We do long-term engagements at a fixed price. Um, there are no hourly rates, therefore no surprises. Um, you know exactly what it's going to cost and exactly what you're going to get. It's a tailored program for you and your business. So we won't just plug you into um, a hype of um, stuff and say, you know, it's not colour by numbers. It's a tailored program where we'll work with you. Um, as I said, long-term engagement, fixed price, a monthly retainer. And for that retainer, we would aim on a 10 times return on investment. Now, I'm really happy to have a chat with you at any time. If you go to my website, there's a, a link there. Go to the Shift website. There's a link there where you can you can connect up. and It'll be on this page here as well um, where you can have a 10-minute chat with me. Love to have a 10-minute chat with you and just see whether I'm a good fit for you and your business. And uh, if I can help you with a simple problem at the same time, happy to do that. Okay. Now, look forward to seeing you at video number two. Thanks very much. Bye.